Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Townships Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, April 24th, 2021 to order. The time is now 9 a.m. We are still doing these meetings through telepresence through Zoom on account of COVID-19 and Governor Wolf's emergency declarations and stay at home orders. Uh, we oftentimes do the Pledge of Allegiance when in person, but due to the nature of the telepresence, we are going to omit them for the time being. Um, the first item or area on the agenda is public comments. Sue, did we receive any written or called in comments throughout the week? There were no emails and the only phone call I had was from Jim Donadini and the Stonecroft HOA and he's on the meeting. Okay, very good. So this time I'll, I'll open up the floor to public comment. So uh, uh, James, I believe, uh, you're on for a public comment. You should be able to unmute yourself. Oh, hold on, I, I see your mouth moving, but uh, let me see if I can let me see if I can unmute, unmute you. There we go. Okay, that better? <laughs> yes, much. I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> now, the, now the the face moving and the voice also. I yes. wanted to thank the township and the engineer in particular for the copy of their report on the inspection of our roads in Stonecroft Village. It, it, I say roads, it's really one road in particular. That was a good design from Landmark that there'd be one road that took all the heavy equipment. It was a five-year design, quite frankly. Um, and speeding that up as quickly as I can, that was 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have one construction road that has had in the last year amazing heavy traffic we that fourth phase of the development is amazing and, the, and it's all superior walls which is wonderful for the homeowners i'm sitting in one now um, but that puts amazing stress on a road uh, amazing stress and if you haven't had a chance i encourage you all to come by and visit and look at the dig that's being done in the central area to accommodate percolation at uh, DPA's uh, insistence for landmark. But that means 200 additional trucks of dirt coming in, 200 additional trucks of dirt coming out. I mean, it, it, and dirt is heavy. And that's all gonna be on, on uh, our road right here, Sweet Birch Lane. Um, and it, like I say, it has amazing wear. The inspection, that was provided, and I'm grateful, is a year old. Yep. Um, I would encourage the engineer to look at it again. We see areas that, that look like they're stressed beyond where. We had asked Landmark if we could core the roads to do a better calculation of what condition of those roads is below the surface. I mean, all that we have is the second tier of, of, of temporary road. So that's the public comment. If, if we can, let's uh, see if, if McCarthy can, or McCarthy himself better, could come by and take another look at this. And all of you, I encourage you, like I say, to see the dig on that drainage. It's, it's an amazing project. Mm -hmm. Well underway and probably will be done sometime next week. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to take a, a drive by there. As for the, the roads, the, a similar sort of inspection, probably even a little more comprehensive than the one that you have in hand will absolutely be done before they do final paving. Just as we had talked about before, we're not like anything else. We're not going to allow them to put a, a pretty top coat over something that is structurally deficient. Well, that I, that is their history in the past. And that, oh. that history yeah. is no indication of what's going to happen in the future, like investments. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it, but they have done that before they've come in. With, like I say, wisely, they do isolate one road to the traffic. And they have done that, and I'm grateful. But that road then is that deeply worn. It was never leveled correctly. The, the runoff drains are not level. The sewage tops are not level. Some of them have damaged from those heavy trucks coming in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I would appreciate it. So you, there is gonna be at least one thorough additional inspection before they Ab do it. Absolutely, yes. And that's something that Aside from the fact of just due diligence, as you have brought it up and the HOA has brought it up, we're going to be monitoring closely as they move through those final stages of construction. Yep. 
And, and, and like I say, if, if, if you get to see the project that they're doing in the central area, it's probably the biggest project that Marion Township has had in some time. It is huge. Um, and they're doing a great job with it. I, you know, I had seen the trucks that move trees and they, they, they do it like you'd move a flower plot. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. They've got that all done. Now they're doing the dig in the central area that will further make us a, a, a fishbowl for draining. Um, and then they'll put pads in. I don't know what the pads are. Uh, I'm sure Mr. McCarthy would, but it's supposed to accelerate or um, further assist in the percolation of water. Oh, is it the, um, the drain so tiles? It, yeah, it's an interesting package. It's an interesting package, and they're doing very well thus far. Okay, okay that's that's my sole comment, and I can I can get you moving along. Very good. Smartly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I see we have uh, Kelly Cox and Don Height from the community on as well. Do either of you have public comments? I'll give you a, a moment or two to, uh, if you choose to either unmute or want to turn your camera on, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, otherwise, we'll move on to the items for discussion for this morning. Okay. So at this time, we move into the main items. The first item for discussion is just the reminder of the emergency declaration as I made at the beginning of the meeting. The original declaration was made back at the March uh, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting with the provision to extend for a period lasting until further action by the board. This was signed on April 1st and remains in effect to this day. Um, as the, the nature of COVID continues to plague not only our community, but every other community, and has really shown no signs of abating, I suggest that we take no action and leave this in place this month as well. Agreed. Okay, next item on the agenda is the culvert at Marion Drive near where Jacob Weiss is. Uh, we're waiting to hear back on the dirt, gravel, and low volume road grant that we requested. Um, we actually, the, the supervisors and Butch all attended the dirt and low volume or low uh, dirt gravel and low volume road seminar. So we now have uh, four certifications amongst uh, personnel within the township and we should have no problems in the future in terms of endorsing those grants. Next item also around roads is the culvert on Sheridan, uh, Sheridan Road. This is near Gerald Hoover's farm at 540 Sheridan Road. The hole in the road is getting bigger. McCarthy Engineering gave us a price of approximately 90,000 to replace the existing pipe with a box culvert uh, measuring 12 foot by four foot. The uh, total cost for that piece of, uh, of the project is about $36,000. The end walls are about 12,000 um, and the guide rails uh, are the really the next expensive item taking up a large majority of the remainder of the cost. This is a, a project that we feel the, the township road crew would be able to handle. So our next steps are gonna be um, getting a little more finalized on the pricing and getting it planned out of what we need to rent, what we need to order, and making sure that the road crew schedules line up for, for when we wanna do that. Um, we will most likely need to post some sort of detour or signage as we do that. And we'll need McCarthy Engineering to give us the, the exact specifics of what has to be done there to be safe and legal. So I will follow up with uh, McCarthy and uh, Jim McCarthy and Butch and everybody else that's going to be directly involved or indirectly involved in that project and see if we can't start getting that planned for maybe a couple of months from now. So I'm thinking either June or July. Next item on the agenda, if there's no questions on that one, is the road project for 2021. So we had sent a, a list over to McCarthy Engineering looking for cost estimates and evidently the cost of construction is way up right now. It's very, very high. So the original packet that we had put over for the first, what we were optimistically call, uh, going for one half and second half, the first half came to about $620,000, which is just about every single thing that we have in the, uh, the road fund right now. So... Um, yeah. Or, or more, yeah. Um, so, if what, we add in the the culvert that you just added, that exceeds our budget. Yeah. So we need to we need to collectively think about this. I have some suggestions out of the list of like Church Road, Idris Road, William Penn Boulevard, Sheridan Road, Palatine Place, Stouchburg Road, and the two sections of Smaltz Road. Um, I'm thinking we should drop 
a couple of them out. Easy ones being like William Penn Boulevard from Canal Road to the Borough Line. That road's obviously you could use it, but it, it's not empirically speaking that bad. There are places that are higher need. That that one that stretch of road was one hundred and forty two thousand dollars. I would say let's let's put that to a later date. Uh, Palantine Place, while a small section in terms of the project was still about ten thousand dollars. I'm thinking we should put that one to a later date as well. And the Stouchburg Road from Topahawken Road to 422, very small stretch, needs some remedial work in terms of being ground down and resurfaced. That one for the very small amount of roadway that it was, was still $35,000. So I'm thinking we should put a pin in that one, do that one at a later date as well. Um, can so I, can yeah. I just put a comment there? Mm -hmm. Just so the public understands, there's certain funds that we can and can't use for any road repair. Currently, we have a little over $600,000 in our accounts. And the only reason why we have that amount is because there was no work that was done uh, last year because of COVID. And we had received the turn back allocation. I believe we have one more turn back allocation coming into the account, which is a little over $52,000. So our ability to do road work on a routine basis is, is very constrained by the amount of money that we receive. So for those of you that seem frustrated or don't understand why we're not doing routine road repairs, because we have a very, very small amount of money to work with on a, on a yearly basis. So, you know, I apologize for anyone's frustration. We would love to get everything done. But again, there's certain monies that come into the township that restrict us um, uh, from what we can and can't do with those monies. Thank you, Arian. Very, very good reminder. Yeah, I, I would love to redo all the roads in the township, but the, the cost associated with that is, is dizzying. Um, so we really have to strategically target the, the roads that we think are in most dire need, try to use the money as ex, uh, efficiently and prudently as possible, using our road crew as much as we can, uh, just to kind of drive costs down in that area from a labor standpoint and chase grants as aggressively as we do. That's really the only ways that we can ever hope to make any sort of headway or progress on this. Um, so I'll, I'll circulate amongst the, the group of us the list of suggestions in advance of Thursday night, but I want to try to get the, the total cost for the, the road work that we're going to do down to about three hundred or 350000 That way we have that packet plus the 90000 or so for the, the culvert repair that we need to do. Yes, agreed. Because we need to keep some funds available in an emergency. Correct. One hundred percent agree with that. That we don't want to. We don't want to spend everything that we have in the bank account because that would be when we have a, a road washout or we have to do some sort of repair to keep a, a main thoroughfare open. So, Jim, do you have any questions on that or comments? No. Okay. Excellent. I'll circulate that list post meeting, and we'll have that for Thursday night. Uh, next up on the agenda is the Catterman Hill Road and Stouchburg Road intersections. Uh, we had received a complaint last month about difficulty seeing oncoming traffic when stopped at the stop sign going south on Catterman Hill Road. Uh, we received an email back from Attorney uh, Brunecker about Section 6112A and six, uh, Section 6102 of Pennsylvania Vehicle Code. We also received an email from McCarthy Engineering about a violation of Section 5.16.2. Uh, and 516.3 of our zoning ordinance. Um, this would allow us to place signage and uh, ask, more than, more than ask, but require that the homeowner trim or remove one of the bushes that is obstructing the line of sight at that intersection. Um, as we had discussed at the last meeting, I have ordered the signs from MSI that were specified by McCarthy Engineering with the like stop sign ahead, dangerous intersection. Um, and I've also ordered the uh, playground caution sign that we had talked about. I kept it simple, just caution. Uh, please maintain uh, the, you know, the usual CDC guidelines about social distancing and sanitizing your hands, yada, yada, yada. Um, kept it short, sweet, and to the point. And uh, we're just waiting for MSI to finish uh, making the signs, especially the, some of them are on stock, but the, the COVID one was a, a custom one, which was not any more expensive. I think it was actually less than the dangerous intersection signs, but they have to actually make it. So as soon as we have them in, I'll have Butcher, one of the road crew guys, swing down and pick them up. And uh, the only question that we'll have for Andy is if we actually have to pass an ordinance to place those signs or if they can be placed as part of the vehicle code. 
Okay, next up on the agenda is the Aikens accounting audit. Um, uh, unless you have any major updates, Irene, uh, since you have a migraine, I'll, I'll just do a quick recap that we've been working there's with. Nothing, there's nothing as far as uh, audit. Um, all materials have been submitted. We got some uh, verbal feedback uh, as well as a quick email from the group telling us that everything is good. We're just waiting for a final uh, review notice, and I think that's about it. And again, they've made themselves available to us throughout the year to help us with anything that we have. So. Okay, very good. Next up on the agenda is the website. Uh, I was not around for the past uh, week and a half to two weeks, so uh, I need to make those DNS record changes so that we can get the, the sites switched over. Uh, and I need to make sure that uh, Civic sends out all of the admin account information to uh, like Sue, Irene, Jim, and myself. Uh, otherwise, we're at a point where we can get the, the old website kind of turned down and the new website live so that anybody that tries to go to that old URL will be automatically redirected. And anybody that would uh, be trying to get to our website would go to marionTWPBurks.com. So that'll be exciting in the next probably week to week and a half, depending on how fast the county moves with their side of the DNS change. Um, we'll be online shortly. Next up is the noise ordinance proposal. Um, I have not had a chance to review it extensively, but what I did see, I, I liked for what uh, Attorney Bernecker added. Um, I wanna read it in greater detail, but I was perfectly fine with the changes that you had made, Irene. So I think any of the changes that were made by uh, Kozlov Stout are gonna be nothing but beneficial. Yep, she was, it was really nice. She just included a block that identified uh, the noise maximum level within the certain zoning uh, regions, which was just added a little bit more to what I had previously written. So I'm very satisfied with it. And, uh, you know, I hope it works to our benefit. Mm -hmm. The only question that I had that I might reach out to, to Andy about is I noticed in the table, there are some blanks for certain zoning. And I don't think that explicitly spells out like if, if not defined what the limit is, or does that imply that there's no limit? Um, I think it would fall back on the previously defined limit. So, and that was at 60 decibels. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. I just, it might be just, I don't know if I'm just maybe splitting hairs, but it might be good to just put that like one sentence that if, if otherwise not defined uh, maximum or for all zoning districts is as stated previously in the ordinance or 60 decibels or whatever. No, um, that's exactly like, that's the only little nitpick thing that I have, but I want to read it and make sure that they didn't call it somewhere that I, I missed. Um, okay, very good. We can look forward to that on Thursday night then. Next up is building maintenance. Uh, Mike Rail replaced the two office windows and they look fantastic. Um, I have not physically gone out and touched them yet, but they look like they're they're very nice windows. They're very very sturdy looking, and they look like they'll do a very good job of keeping the the heat and cool in in their respective seasons and the water out. So we won't have to have that towel on the windowsill anymore. So it's already quieter. It's already warmer. <laughs> good, good. So the next step is we need to start replacing some of the other windows with the the budget that we have for building maintenance. Uh, the two windows above the garage are in dire need of replacement to the point that they're actually falling out of the building. Uh, Mike Rail has given us a quote of uh, $1,600 to replace those two windows. Uh, I say based on the relatively low cost that that, that is for that work and the fact that we, we know he does a quality job and it's going to be the exact same windows, I think we should authorize him to go and start doing that as soon as possible. I would agree. Okay, so... I'll make a motion to authorize Mike Rail to replace the two windows above the garage for a quoted price of $1,600. Second. Second. Yeah, I was gonna say, we need to figure it out. Uh, yeah, give it to, give it to Jim. Um, Rock, paper, scissors. I'll yeah, give was... a touch this time. Okay. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, I will let him know. Okay, very good. Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Next up on the agenda wait, is. Wait, wait. wait. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Were you talking about the? Oh, the oh yes, of... yes. Yeah. Thank you, okay. thank you. I uh, I got sidetracked in writing down the motion notes. Um, I, can so, I take it from you? Yes, here? please. So um, we had passed uh, in the budget for about fifty-four thousand dollars to uh, do repairs on the building, and if anyone had, if anyone walks around the outside of the building, it's more than obvious that there's been a lot of neglect. Um, our goal is to renovate the meeting room so that we have better accommodations for everyone. Peter, you were kind enough to pick up uh, those um, projectors. So I've been reaching out to a number of contractors. We're actually keeping a running list. Unfortunately, we've only had one positive response and, and that's from, so you said, um, uh, uh, Rick's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna to try to get at least three quotes, uh, but it, it again, similar to what I had with um, the experience with reaching out to auditors, um, I, I'm getting no response from companies uh, throughout the county. So I'm gonna extend out my net and, and just keep a running list of people. I'm gonna to try to contract at least five contractors a week and see who gives us the best options. So I had sent out an email if there's any concern for any other um, items that would require repair. And the brief list is in our agenda, such as replacing the windows, which is obvious, uh, removing uh, non-functioning pipes, including the drop ceiling, electrical work, and wiring for audio, as well as the new projectors. Sue had made a really good point if you enter into the room what would make a little bit more sense is actually flipping uh, the layout as we currently have it. When you walk in, you, uh, people, uh, the supervisors head towards the right, towards the front of the room where the blackboards are. If we actually flip the room, we have that nice big wall that can just be painted white, which, which make an excellent surface for any kind of uh, projection. Um, so, I mean, I like that concept of flipping the room. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone has any other ideas, that's what I would suggest and discuss with the contractor when they would come in. So we want that wall where the, what is it? The thermostat is the only mm -hmm. thing that's on that mm -hmm. wall currently. Uh, having that as where the supervisors were currently sit and having the audience back towards the blackboard. I'm fond of the blackboards and I'd like to keep them. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, the room definitely needs to be painted. So I, I'm not concerned as much about the flooring. If anyone has any issues about the flooring, I, I don't think we need to do anything with that. But um, if anyone has any other concepts or ideas about the room. No, I, I like the idea. And one of the things that we could do with, with the difference in the space is it's, again, we want to keep the walking path open, but it's a slight bit wider on that end. Yeah. We can look because the tables are in dire need of replacement too. Mm -hmm. They're falling apart. We could maybe get something that is not just a, a straight, but has a little bit of a curve to it and fit into that that corner there. We'll have to take some measurements, but I, I love the idea of, of flipping it around, especially because we won't have to mess with the character of the building. We can keep the blackboards and we can paint that, that rear surface with like a whiteboard paint or something like that, which would work fantastic with the projectors. Yeah. And currently that's where all the outlets are. Yep. There's only oh. one outlet at the blackboard end of the building, at the room. So. Yeah. I kind of figured we're going to have to add some additional outlets in that's that's something that we're going to have to tackle at some point. Get an electrician in to to do some work, but um, yeah, while we're while we're making changes, it's going to be a lot easier to run cable there than it is to run it all the way to the other side of the room. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I I love the idea. Let's let's do it. Do we need to? What is what's the cable that you use for either computer or a cable TV? What's that? Uh, so there's two, there's actually two types. There's coax, which is uh, RG six. Okay which is the, like the main cable connection. That would be like television and your, your data line to your modem. Um, uh, I actually, in my comments, I was gonna make a request to pick up some cabling. So I'll actually scroll down to that. Um, I should have a spool of RG6 that I, I barely ever use. So I will donate, if I can find that, I'll donate whatever we need okay. for that. Um, but we should yeah. pick up a spool of what's RJ45, which is either Cat5e or Cat6, which is the, the network cable and a spool, a short spool, maybe 300 feet of RJ11, which is the your normal telephone or fax line okay. so that I can I can wire. And uh, I actually would, with everybody's approval, uh, I'd like to pick that up sooner rather than later. That way the, the office, I can rewire the office before we put the furniture back in. Because okay. when we, we pulled that out, it was a tangled rat's nest of wire that has been spliced together so many times in, 
I don't know, however long in, in very creative ways. So we really should just spend the, the little bit of money and do it right so that we don't have bare uh, twisted together wires hanging out or a, a network cable that's going to Sue's desk that is six short pieces that have been stitched together. Um, so I'll, I'll roll real quick run through. I'd like to buy basically about $100 worth of wiring, which is a couple spools of wire, uh, the needed jack and ends and termination bits that go along with that, which is about another $100. Um, box covers and chaseways, which is the little like little surface mount outlet for the office and the nice wire mold that makes it look like uh, like it's supposed to be there. It's about 60 bucks worth of material. Um, and then a couple of things around the, the networking and the audiovisual stuff as structural elements. We're gonna need at least one rack, which is the, the big metal cabinet that stuff goes in. Um, I'd like to get two because I'd like to split up the audiovisual stuff and the computer stuff just from a heat standpoint. It's about $500 worth of material there. Um, we need a bigger switch the network switch that we have is actually like two switches daisy chained together, which is functional, but really not ideal or efficient. That's about $70. A termination panel for all the wiring, which is about $45, and a rack mount power strip, which is about $40. So I'll send a, an itemized list out, but I can, I can order that and probably have most of that here within the next like one to two days. And what I was saying to Sue is the, the big thing is as long as I can get the the, the outlet boxes and the chaseway put up and the wires fed through. I don't have to do final termination. I can run some temporary wiring for Sue's desk so that we can get her back in the office and then terminate and cut over later. But the big thing is I want to get that uh, box and, and chaseway stuff in before we start putting desks there because it's going to make it infinitely harder to do once that's in place. Absolutely. So if I could ask, I think what an easy thing to do is I'm just going to get a big piece of paper, put it in the meeting room, put down the list of items that we want done. If you have any suggestions as to where you would want certain cables and certain outlets at, I think that would be the best thing to do this way. Every time we get a, a contractor in, they have an idea of exactly what we want done. We're also going to work to preserve the current uh, lighting because it's beautiful mm -hmm. and the historic value to it. So I think just a, just a big piece of paper standing in there taped to the wall saying this is what we want done in this room. And if anyone has any other ideas, Jim, I want you to come in, take a look around, see if you could make any suggestions because... It's been wonderful, just like everyone comes in with a slightly different perspective and we have these conversations and we wanna make it the best that we can for, for the meetings down the road. I wanna thank Peter for doing all the labor. He's saving us several thousand dollars. I'm oh, happy, yeah. to, happy to help, happy to lend my expertise where I can. Um, touching on the lights, Irene, I, I really love the idea of retaining the lights and I know this oh, is something we had just kind of mentioned in, yeah. in casual conversation. Um, I would like to take them down. I'll even donate my, my time and possibly some material to do it, but take them apart, redo the wiring in them because I'm sure the wiring is very, very old and like polish them while they're down and shorten whatever we have to shorten from a chain standpoint so that they're closer to the ceiling because we want to lower it with the drop ceiling, but uh, really keep as much of the original character of the building as we can as we start to do efficiency-based improvement. Definitely. And we need to improve the lighting in there. It's quite dim in the evening. So yeah, we can get yeah. much brighter LED bulbs. Cause yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, those mm -hmm. are like little curly Q, like CFL bulbs in there, Sue. I don't think they're right, still no, incandescent. Those are, those are big. I'm pretty sure those are big bulbs in those hanging lights. Okay. I thought, I thought Peter Wallace replaced those either way. They're, oh, I, they're, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But, um, uh, well, look, either way, we can get some really nice, for, and LEDs, thankfully, have come down in cost over the past couple of years. Okay. You can get a very nice, bright LED bulb for basically nothing. Well, that's what Yurig suggested yesterday. Just get big LED bulbs to put in there. Mm -hmm. um, and he suggested yesterday, and and Mike also did, um, put um, some kind of LED can lights in there. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So... And I have, I told you um, yesterday, um, give us a price on replacing the main entrance door mm -hmm. and also the door in the hallway that is chained yep. shut. <laughs> yep. That was, I had two notes on agenda item number nine to add to the, the list of things we want. It was the front door and the back door. Yeah. Yep. They're, they're in, again, dire yeah. need of, of some attention there. 
So Sue, and I only said, I mean, paper. when he came in yesterday, he said, I was told to look at the meeting room. So I didn't tell him to price that any drop ceilings anywhere else or, you know, removing pipes or anything. I just said concentrate on the meeting room, but then give us a price on both doors. Okay. Um, so, so let's see what he comes back with. And depending on what they come back with, we can say like, hey, we're also interested based on the price you've given us doing the, the hallway and right. the office and, and right. see where that gets us. Right. Um, but I think we're, I think we're off to a good start. We know what we want to do. We know how we need to do it or how we want to do it. We just need to get people to, to give us quotes on, on doing it. Right. Yeah. Um, and then another thing to keep in mind, um, he asked me yesterday if the air conditioning window unit is staying. And I said, as of right now it is. I mean, I said, Supervisors were talking about adding central air to the furnaces, mm -hmm. but as of now, that's not happening. So, yeah. so Irene, make that you know, make both the air conditioner in the office and the air conditioner in the meeting room are going to have to stay for now. Um, yeah. So the air conditioner in the office, um, that's that still fits in the window, so that would be okay. That's a small enough space. Yeah. Um, do we want to look about getting uh, an indoor coil and a condenser for the meeting room heater? That's all told. That's not going to be that expensive. Um, rough ballpark guess would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of like five to seven thousand, depending on how efficient of a unit we get. Um, but I can make some calls and see if we can get some people out to give us a quote, but it's a, a really so, relatively simple prospect. You have to just put the, the, the indoor coil in line with the, the unit, like right after that, before it goes out into the main duct. And then there's a line set that goes out to that, that big unit with the fan outside. So if we can get somebody to, to kind of retrofit that in, rather than keeping the big unit in the, the meeting space, we could just get an, an actual AC unit put onto our heater. Because I think then, ultimately, does, go ahead. Does anybody know how much it costs to have AC hooked up to the furnaces? I don't know. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm oh. saying. Yeah, this that would exactly be that. We take the furnace and you, you cut out a small section of the ductwork that's right after like the, the supply side of things. And there's a, a unit that is the, the indoor side of it that actually cool does the cooling, slips right in. And then there's a line set. There's two lines, two copper lines, one of them larger than the other that actually handles the, the refrigerant that goes out to the condenser, which is that unit with the, the right. fan. Right. So not a, not a terribly complicated prospect to do that. It's not something that like, uh, I mean, I, other than cutting and, and screwing things in, I could do that, but we definitely want to get an HVAC company out to, to do it. So we need to get some quotes, get some people out. But um, I had done the exercise when we were having the heating system put in with that whole, that whole contract debacle of what it would actually cost to add that on. And it wasn't major, but it just would have added complication to that already complicated scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know long-term we want to have air conditioning on most, if not all of the heating units, um, especially because we're one of the other items that I, I have is talking about changing the garage over to the office space. So just about every single heating unit that we have in the building could benefit from that at some point. So based on the budget, and we'll have to, to kind of see where that fits in, get a quote for one, get a quote for all of them, really, and see where that gets us. See if it's going to be cheaper. They might, we might get an economy of scale out of, okay, we're doing all the labor at once, really. So it's going to cost you 30,000 to do all four units rather than $10,000 a piece for the four of them. So we'll have to, we'll have to get some quotes and we'll have to see, but uh, long-term we're much like everything else. We're trying to make the building a much better, more efficient, more accessible space. Um, really with the idea of when COVID's over that we can actually have, you know, quality gatherings of things, meetings, community association meetings, bingo, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, I'll get some, I'll call, make some calls, send some emails, try to get some prices around that. And uh, we'll have to keep shooting for the, uh, the drop ceiling and everything else. Um, one of the things we can do ourselves, and I'll talk to the road crew to see if they have any interest in it, is the removal of the old pipes. That's pretty simple. That's some time in a sawzall because the, the pipes have already been drained. So it's going to be cutting it off in the second floor, cutting it off in the first floor, cutting it off in the basement and pulling pipes out from places. And then uh, the real big thing would be getting contractors to cover over the holes in a, a very nice, uh, presentable fashion. So... Uh, anything else on the, the building maintenance points, Jim or Irene? 
No, I'm going to see if I can um, share the documents with you guys at uh, on the Google Drive. Okay. And uh, I'm not too sure if I know how to do this, but I'll figure it out. So I'm going to keep that running list and we'll have items posted. I'll put something in the hallway, put something in the meeting room. And this way, if anyone sees something that we, they think should be addressed, we add it to it. And this way, when a contractor comes, it's there in plain English and we get moving on this. Okay. So, so uh, Irene, on the main directory of the Board of Supervisors for on the Google Drive, I've created a folder called Building Maintenance. Okay. You should just drag and drop right into it and we'll all see okay. it. Okay, thank you. I'll work on that. Okay. Um, before we move on, I have one last thing that I, I just thought of. The uh, Speaking of the garage to office conversion, we should start uh, circulating floor plan designs. I know Sue was more inclined to the, the open concept. I kind of like having a, a bit of a divider between uh, the outside, maybe even just like a half wall or a wall with like one of the doctor's office style sliding windows on it, but um, some way of breaking that up that if Sue lets somebody in, they, they don't have to be directly into the office area. The other added benefit is you can place desks. Like if we have additional desks for like Irene or Jim, myself, Dan as the treasurer, that we can get more desks there without having to have people walk through kind of our, our bullpen area. So I think we just need to jot down our thoughts, our desires on what that space should be and try and workshop well, something that fits for everybody. If we create that entryway and there's a vestibule and there's a window there, that gives us the added benefit that in the event of another pandemic, there's a, a, a point that the public can access mm -hmm. the office without having to come into direct contact with Sue. Yes. So I'm, I'm actually, yeah. uh, what I'm saying is not in replacement of that. I'm oh, okay. in 100% agreement. So we have that, that box there. Okay. What I'm saying is like if somebody comes in, we were talking about having a door off to would be the, the right if you walk into the space yeah. and you're standing there. Yeah. Other than having that just lead directly into the office, having a, a, a hallway sort yeah. of and sue wasn't super keen on having because yeah, i want to be able to see out and see who pulls into the parking lot yep. so so what i'm saying sue, i don't is... have to i mean if somebody says they have to go to the bathroom i can say you need to go outside i'll let you in the other door i mean i yeah. know it's going to be a pain but I'm just, I would... nobody goes to our bathroom except the crap codes guys yeah so, yeah so what i was leaving that them in the yeah. office you know it's... yeah so what i was saying is rather than like a whole wall still mm -hmm. allowing you to see the windows mm -hmm. we just have like a, a countertop height thing and it could either be open or it could be hit like a situation where we have little little sliding windows yeah. on there um, some way of breaking that up so that you you can have you can let people in without having to have them get into the stuff like they mm -hmm. don't have to walk through the office area where you're at or the files are at or anything like that and we have the added ability of like i said putting additional desks or, or cabinets or anything like that because um, we could get waist high filing cabinets for any of the, the paperwork that you have rather than the, the big shelves or anything like that. Um, but really, this is a, a thought exercise. We all mm -hmm. come to this with a slightly mm -hmm. different perspective and a slightly different set of ideas. Yeah. Let's get them all on paper. Let's look at a floor yeah. pan and, and see what we can get hashed out. Um, going back to the main entry door, mm -hmm. are we able to, well, I'm sure we're able to, can we have a buzzer system so that Sue doesn't have to get up from the desk, whether it's from the current office now or down the road if we do something, so that Sue can just press a button and allow people in? Yep. So we actually, we could set this up in such a way that when they replace the, the current front door, we put the buzzer wiring in. Even if it's yep. not hooked up, we have the buzzer wiring in. So at some point when we're done with the office, the garage conversion, Sue could buzz in one door or the other without having to get up and, and move. Yep. I think so, that's a smart thing to do. Yeah. I, I like the, the buzzer idea. Uh, idea. I really do. Yeah. And it's safety and it's just keeping in mind, you know, it, it's very difficult now, especially people coming to the office and keeping that access limited. And so, and it, I hate to keep people out of the building, but at if we have that office conversion, it still allows people to access the building, but keep the distance from mm. Sue. Because mm. Sue's really the only person that's there for the most part. And uh, it, it, people can come in like one at a time or, you know. The other, the other nice thing, like with just, I'm going to try and sell the half wall idea here. But um, if we had the half wall thing for like the, the tax collector, 
rather yeah. than having to have Sue kicked out of her desk area from the main vestibule, she could just leave the door open. And if we have that half wall and a sliding window, tax collector could sit there. People could come in, deal with the tax collector from a kind of next next to, mm -hmm. next window down sort of affair and still allow for that that's isolation from the main part of the office and the social distancing should we ever have something like a pandemic in the future. Yes. So let, like I said, let's uh, let's circulate some thoughts, circulate some ideas. Um, depending on what you guys give me, I'll, I'll try and throw together like a floor plan like I, I did that that one, I think it was like uh, whatever day that was that we were having the uh, dirt and low volume gravel road so that we can look at it and see what it feels like on paper. But I think that's going to be a, a much better use of the space for the garage. And then we shift the trucks over to the current salt shed and get some of those uh, uh, hoop salt sheds for behind it, like we had discussed at one of the prior meetings. So if we start the start the planning process for shifting stuff around, I think it's going to be a much, much better use of the building. Yep. Okay, cool. So uh, next item on the agenda is the Eagle Disposal Contract Amendment. Uh, this was for the trash and recycling totes uh, per Andy. This was approved by the Board of Supervisors at a prior meeting, so we just have to sign the contract amendment. Um, if that's sitting out somewhere, I'll swing through either sometime this weekend or this week and get that signed so that we can send that back over to Eagle. I just wanted to put it on the agenda so it gets in the minutes just because yep. it's a contract kind of yep. thing. <laughs> I completely, completely endorse that. So thank you, Sue. Sure. Um, I, I will just have it on Irene's chair and somebody can sign it. Okay. I guess, I don't know, Peter, do you need to sign it? I think it's technically me. If I recall when I read that, it's looking for chairman signature. Okay. Not that Irene yeah. couldn't no. couldn't or can't, but I think it specifically yeah. is looking for one okay. versus the other. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll have it on the chair. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up is the Uniform Construction Code Countywide Appeals Board. Uh, the new agreement must be executed and will replace the previous agreement. Uh, this must be done by ordinance. Uh, there is a, also a $300 annual fee for this. Uh, so, uh, Sue, did we get the ordinance from yeah, Coslock? I think I had, I, no, not from Coslock. I had emailed everybody and I have not heard back from Andy. Okay, so... Um, Let's let's put another line out, and if not, we'll just we'll, I'll call Andy and, and ask him for that. Because if we have the ordinance on Thursday night, we can move forward with it. Otherwise, we would have to uh, either authorize us to do that out of cycle, like between meetings, right? Um, or we would have to wait until the next uh, either workshop or board right. of supervisors meeting. I mean, they, you know, they included this ordinance in with the letter, and I I emailed it to Andy just kind of. So we could look over it and say yes, you know, give his blessing or not. Um, yeah, I, I I can resend that email. Okay, yeah, I mean, if you would, I'm sure I can find it in my inbox. But a, maybe just a simple bump to the top, like if anything else, just keep us all cc'd on it and ask Andy if he's had a chance to look yeah. at it. I'll just resend it and say, have you had a chance to look at this? Yeah. Okay, I know Irene stepped away for a second. Um, so the, the next couple of items are, are pretty basic. I'll, I'll do that and I'll, I'll give her a quick recap when she gets back. Uh, pub, the Berks County Public Works Association meetings have been canceled through 2021 because of COVID-19. Uh, any annuals dues paid for 2020 will continue membership until they can resume normal activities. Uh, next up, Countryside Fuel now offers uh, annual system checks on gas furnaces and et cetera. We received a letter and a brochure. Uh, based on the fact that Countryside is our fuel supplier and we do get annual system checks on the gas furnace and everything else, it may be worthwhile to look into that further and work on getting that in place for them to check our system rather than, um, I think it's uh, Moyer that's currently doing that. Nobody's done the gas furnaces since they were installed. Okay. So, yeah, that's let's. That's why I included this oh, because that... uh, I know they've not been checked. Okay, so let's. Moyers, Moyers does our plumbing in. They used so to do the, the old the old heater. They used to do the old furnace. Yeah. Um, and they do like our toilets and plumbing stuff. But um, mm. I don't even know if they do furnace stuff. I would imagine they would. I think so, but I know I've I've personally been using Countryside, and I've never had any problems with them for anything that I've ever had to have them do. And like I said, they're our current fuel supplier. Um, mm -hmm. I see Irene is back. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's okay. So uh, Countryside Fuel sent us a brochure. They offer service on things. They get they are who we get our um, uh, fuel through. We obviously have the, the natural gas connection of the building, but uh, any of the gasoline or diesel and stuff like that, we get through Countryside. 
Um, I think we should look into getting on a, a system maintenance plan with yeah. them around the heaters. So we'll we'll look that over and. Um, and can well, we I guess a clipboard next to the heater saying the year and the time? Yes. Well, so they, they usually so provide they, that. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's industry best practice on that that there's actually a sticker on the heater itself yep. that they sign out dates of doing stuff and then if it's a situation where they had to replace a bunch of parts that they'll usually write like an invoice number on it and give you the invoice mm -hmm. um but so that's that's supposed to happen and if it doesn't then we can specifically make like a binder or a clipboard or something for it yep. um I'll, I'll stick it on the calendar then yep and then yeah we could even schedule schedule things and put them on the calendar so it gives us reminders of like hey countryside's going to be here next week for the, the heater forgive um, me for my ignorance but are you able to create are we able to create a calendar on google drive with oh yes things? most okay. most certainly yes there's actually there's an existing calendar for the uh, the the office account that i had created the marion township office okay. um and that's um should be shared with everybody, but I'll make sure that it is. But that's okay. where I put the, like when I scheduled the Zoom meetings, that's the calendar that it's on or like the dirt and low volume gravel road seminar that we all attended. That's the the Met central calendar that I put that on. Um, if you could show me how to enter in data into that, because I think that would be very useful. Again, if it's there, everyone sees it. If there's any way to uh, have an alert for things, because Dan and I have a paper calendar for what we need for auditing purposes. And I'm just going to just refresh it every year, just keep it there. I'm still a paper and pen person. But I think, again, just to implement best practices, just having that available. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much a, a paper and pen person myself, no, too. But I thought yeah. that was a computer you were looking no, at. No, 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 paper. Oh, my goodness. Now, with that said, I also do have like four screens and two computers okay. going. But um, so I love the idea of having something written down that you guys can refer to. But if we know there are key dates, especially just from a reminder standpoint, if we know that the uh, the Perto audit is due on a certain date, let's put it on the calendar and let's set a reminder so that it, it pesters yep. us a week out. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that you guys have all the necessary rights and permissions and maybe one of these weekends we'll do a, a crash course on uh, some of the Google features. Okay. Okay, next up is the Act 537. Um, as we had discussed before, we received a, a letter from the DEP in response to our memo about uh, some changes with a slightly more negative response than we were expecting. Um, our path forward right now is to do that income study to prove uh, some of our concerns around financial feasibility and uh, to get the letter out to the property owners about the pump out and inspection schedule. Uh, Jim McCarthy is also going to get us some information around the number of remaining EDUs at the Womelsdorf Sewer Authority along with what they're expected, um, I'll use the term burn rate, but uh, what their expected use in capacity over the next couple of years is so that we can make a, an adequate projection on if the, if the plan that has already been submitted is actually even remotely feasible anymore, because that would give us legs to stand on for argument of there's, there's a lot of things that have to be updated in this, you should let us update it. Um, we also had received a list of funding sources, uh, an up-to-date set of funding sources from McCarthy Engineering that uh, there's potentially more out there than we had originally thought, which is a little comforting, but I'm still very concerned about the overall scope and breadth of the project. Um, the other thing that we should maybe ask McCarthy Engineering to do is to give us an up-to-date calculation of cost for the project, as this was done many, many years ago and came to $5 million. Costs have gone nowhere but up, especially in light of COVID. Construction cost is way up right now. So that might be further helpful from a financial standpoint if we can get a, a recalculation on that done to see what the actual project price tag is. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in terms of the letter, um, I'm going to be taking some time off this upcoming week, so I'll see if I can find some mutual availability on everybody's schedule to get a, either a Zoom call. I personally like the, the Zoom format because I can I can see everybody, but uh, uh, get some time to talk to Alan Madera about what he needs from an on-lot management standpoint and if there's any tailoring that he would like to have us do on that letter prior to us sending it out. That is the last item on the agenda. Um, just to circle back to the, the request for technical improvements. Um, 
rough ballpark figure is probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about a thousand dollars in all i shouldn't say all the things but the majority of the things that we need to get started um can I have somebody make a motion to authorize me to spend some money for things like the racks, the switch, the termination panels, the power strips, the wiring, the little fiddly bit ends that we need for the cables, the boxes, the chaseway, all that stuff? Sure. I'd like to make a motion to authorize Peter McCarthy to make purchases necessary to upgrade and update our current uh, technical support system with respect to items utilized in the current office, which may include service racks and other wiring necessary to do so. Uh, the sum okay. um, is, is, do you want me to include a sum in there, Peter? Um, I would say just, just for the, the sake of good practice, up to $1,000. Up to $1,000 then. Second. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, I'll make some orders. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, next up on my, my comments is the cold patch. Uh, we've already gone through one load of cold patch. I've asked Butch to, to get the next one, as we still have plenty of potholes to go around. So I, I have I identified a few personally for him. Um, I know some people from the community have also identified a few. So if you know of anywhere that is in need of a bit of cold patching, please let us know. Um, or really also for the supervisors, let, let me know or let Sue know and we'll make sure that we, we get somebody out there to, to throw some stuff in there. But um, the other thing is I need to talk to Butch and I need to talk to McCarthy Engineering. There's a section on canal that I've noticed because it's I drive it frequently. The road is starting to cave on the one side. So I think we need to get some like riprap or something in there to keep the bank from, from easing any further because the, the blacktop is actually starting to depress inward so if we don't do something with that soon i have a feeling we're going to lose uh, a, a part of the lane on that and we'd have to either close it or, or tap into that uh, that emergency fund we were talking about earlier to make sure that the road is still passable so i'll keep you guys in the loop on that but we need to find out what we need to do that is um compliant for like environmental and uh road safety reasons other than that, I don't have any additional comments. Uh, Irene, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, Sue had pointed out to me what we should do for future meetings is have another little section, not to prolong anyone else's torture. Um, but there's quite a bit of stuff that goes on financially that I've typically been including in the comments section. But I think we should just have an added uh, treasurer's uh, comments or you know, more information uh, sharing. So um, for example, you know, we were just talking about road items. Um, I would like to find out if there's any jobs that we need to finance, um, because again, there's a certain amount of things that we can only do with certain funds. So if that's something that we need to face down the road or if that's something that we wanna consider, I know there's ways of financing things. I think it's a bit more flexible when it, it's not associated with road stuff. And anything that we do finance, of course, there's going to be a charge for it. But if there's an emergency or something necessary. Um, so down the road, um, Sue was kind of to, to, to say, hey, why don't we do this when it comes to the meetings? I'd like to have a little bit more of a treasurer's report. Um, I don't have to go over the bills or anything else at, at nauseam because everything is going to be posted on Google Drive. And again, hopefully down the road when we're back in the meeting room, we're able to post that. And anyone that has any questions can certainly ask. Um, the information is, is, I hope, in a very readable and easy format. Um, going back to another issue I know we had briefly discussed at a prior meeting, I think we need to do a credit card. Um, I had to dish out $432 of, on my credit card to update QuickBooks. Uh, that uh, I can handle that kind of uh, an issue. Uh, the other part is I'm also the person writing the checks, so I certainly can get myself refunded as soon as possible. But there's also a coordination issue when it comes to getting you and Jim down to the office to co-sign those checks. Um, but Sue pointed out to me that Don needs fuel for the mower, and that's about $15 a week. There's only a certain amount of money that we keep in petty cash, 
And so having a certain amount of people authorized to use it, I would think that up to a $500 limit uh, would is what I would prefer. Um, authorized users would be obviously the supervisors, Sue, I'd like to have Butch on there and as well as Don. Um, and it's simply a matter of having everyone stop over at Fulton Bank, having them sign on to the account and that would be done. No one is personally responsible for those funds. It does not require a credit check for anyone personally. It all falls back to the township. So if I'd like everyone between now and Thursday's meeting to consider that and move forward. I know we always had, we previously I had mentioned about different methods of paying bills. Um, thinking about the ACH transfer, there is a fee associated with that. Until and unless we apply for something like that, we don't know what those fees would be. Um, I don't think that that would necessarily be very useful to us after kind of taking a step back and talking about it actually with Dan. What we can do is we could pay some bills online um, so, for example, UGI, Comcast, and NetEd, that would save us, a, you know, a, a couple of dollars every month. Uh, there's some other uh, items as well as like John Deere, financial, etc. Um, the dilemma that I initially had was how do we track those payments because they're an electronic payment and our current, um, our current uh, um accounting system does not allow for me to enter in a number to track that payment. When Dan pointed out to me, each of those transactions has an authorization number. So we would use that authorization number in lieu of the check number, which would help us track it down the road if there's any issues. So we can do online payments and have those, those payments tracked. Of course, we would print out that form and attach it to the bill and that would get filed. So again, something to consider, um, we would have to set up a, a, a you know, user ID and password. Sue is awesome at keeping track of that, but we would keep our own book to, to have all those accounts tracked. So I think I would prefer to do that. The remainder of our, most of our bills, um, some of them are from very small vendor, vendors and some are from very large groups that, that neither accept ACH transfers or have an online payment system. So we would continue to write checks. Um, again, so if you guys would consider that for the next meeting, if everyone feels comfortable starting to do online bill payment, it, it, it would save us money. I mean, I hate to say it, I keep track of every dime, every penny that goes through that office. So let me start on another subject. Uh, Rick Rule was kind enough to come down and help us clean up our accounts. And, and just to give everyone a perspective, I know when I balance my checkbook, I don't like to leave any, any past due items uh, that people haven't uh, received the check or cashed the check. I don't like to leave that lingering. We had transactions in that account from 2017. So what that did is it put our real-time balance out of whack. So Rick cleared that up. We processed the paperwork, and so I have that in the file. So when it comes to the audit, we have that correction made. So now all of our transactions in our account are real-time. The balance that's reflected in there should be the balance that we, if you go to the bank, that's the exact balance that's present. Of course, checks that haven't been cashed and, and, and checks that haven't been deposited as, as of yet. So um, that was fantastic of, of Rick to help us out with. It, it wasn't something I felt comfortable doing on my own. Rick did it properly through the accounting uh, method, plus helped us update our program because once the program gets to a certain age, we can't, some certain features aren't accessible. So having said that, there are a couple of checks. So now, let me backtrack a little bit, I apologize. So now I'm able to track any check that hasn't cleared as of 2021. We have a couple of checks that we sent out. I contacted those individuals. They did not receive the checks and those checks have not been cashed. Um, does everyone feel comfortable if I go through a stop payments on those checks? We're talking about four months stale. And so if we stop payment on those checks, again, our account balance is correct. And I have a visible transaction that the bank has now made an annotation that I can track through our accounting program and we're kosher when it comes to all accounting. Yep. So going down the line, yeah, 100% agree with the treasurer's report. I love the idea of current balance 
forecasts where we are in certain budgets, uh, budget items, if there are things that we're uh, either close to exceeding or have gone over budget on for any reason, calling them out early, I think yeah. is going to be a huge benefit. Um, when we're back in the office, we can absolutely have something that's put together as like either a PowerPoint or even a Word document that we scroll through where you can see a report of the budget items or a pie chart of like used budget and certain funds. There's literally the sky's the limit. Whatever you'd like to present, we will have ample space to project it onto the wall. Um, love the idea of the credit card. We had talked about that before. If we can get the, the authorizations uh, properly in place and uh, sequenced card numbers so that it tracks the transactions, rather than having one card number that six people uses, you have card number one, I have card number two, Jim has card number three, et cetera. Um, as long as we can have that in place, I think it's a great idea and we'll streamline a lot of the, the, the basic stuff that we do around petty cash, especially when it comes to buying like gas for the tractor. Uh, the occasional, I know I've had to, to credit card and reimburse things for like some of the, the UCC construction stuff and like the, uh, the buried tank insurance policy would take a lot of the headaches that we have around trying to get that in place, um, especially because there's more and more stuff that's going to an online format. Oddly enough, some municipal things that we have to pay for on an online format there's now, too. There's but, quite a bit. And every yeah. month, I'm finding myself using my personal credit card to pay those items. I would say now it's probably on a monthly basis. So mm -hmm. so I agree. Let's get to a, a more financially mature posture as yep. a township for being able to pay our bills. Um, as for the different methods of paying bills, um, I agree with you. ACH has a fee associated to it. So if if you need to use it, that's one you use. Otherwise, the online bill pay, like OLB, is the best way to do it. And if we have ones that are the same, roughly the same amount or pretty similar or things that we know we're absolutely going to, to approve every month, mm -hmm. MedEd uh, for the electric, UGI for the gas, Comcast for the, the voice and data, um, that sort of stuff, the John Deere financial, all of that stuff can be set up as a recurring auto payment. And then we do the paperwork for attaching the bill to the record and putting it into QuickBooks. I think that's that's all going to be good quality of life and time-saving improvements for how we run our books. Um, also, thank you for taking the time with Rick to get the, the accounts cleaned up. I know that was one of the things that the little bit that I had been working on that had kind of scared me because I saw stuff from like five or six years ago. And I'm like, this, I'm, I'm going to hope that this is just a, kind of a, a weird entry or somebody messed something up because like right. it, it needs housekeeping. So now that we've had that done, that's phenomenal and we'll make you and, and Dan's lives a lot easier in terms of keeping a real time pulse of the bookkeeping. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm really happy where we're at now. This is where we should have been at. And, and I think it's going to make things going forward a lot easier. Um, I'm on track with Pam at Fulton Bank to do like a once a year wellness check basically to make sure we're in good financial shape. Um, again, Rick is, is a wonderful resource. The other thing that, again, Sue is, is just amazing. Um, she's helping us keep track of uh, things that we should have been billing for but didn't. And so I'll be getting letters out to people in the community for items that we've been eating the cost of. And um, Sue's writing skills are just amazing. So <laughs> she's helping me get together some, some uh, letters we could send out to individuals in the community for items that we, again, have been eating the cost and it, and it hurts our revenue. It hurts what we can do for the community in turn. Um, so, so that's just the other little part I wanted to add. And again, Rick has helped me uh, understand how to use the program a lot better for our purposes so now I could run different monthly reports and so that we could keep track of monies that are that should be paid to us and haven't been paid and just keeping things on par where they should have been it's a lot more work for me and and Dan as well um, but I think once we get into the groove of it and, and keep up with it I think it's going to be a lot easier um, the other thing I'm going to do just for everyone's easy you know ease of mind I'm just going to keep literally a big piece of paper that's going to show what we have in what funds we have available for building improvements and funds that we have available for road work. Just a big number, update that every, if I can, every week or every two weeks or even at the very least monthly. So we know what funds are, are available. So it's just a visual cue to know where we're on, where we're at on track. Would you, for the purposes of hanging in the office, would you like to get a little whiteboard? 
Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it, I, I think I might even have a whiteboard at home or something. But yeah, just something so that we can just visually see it. It's just something to help out. So, you know, oh, one more thing that I have as a request for you and Jim in particular. Mm -hmm. The desk has been fully cleaned out now. If you desire to look through the old folders that were in the desk, you're more than welcome to. They have been put into boxes for storage. To be honest with you, and it's something like Dan and I had talked about, um, I could not, I understand what the information is. I could not understand the filing system. There were things that were together that made no sense to me. So as part of what we need to do for the future is we need to have a system so that any of us can jump into anyone else's seats. So if you were to walk in there today and say, God forbid, let's say I was hospitalized and I couldn't perform my functions as a treasurer, you could sit at the desk and say, okay, where am I at with the accounts? You can pull up the computer, but you could also see the hard copy files. And within, I would say two to three minutes, you say, I understand exactly what Irene was doing. This is how things are filed because it's clear and it, it, it's just, it's a common sense type of approach. Um, Anyone can look at it. So I need from both you and Jim, any items that you have that there's hard copy papers, I need you both to create a file and there's room in, in the desk now to create a file saying, this is this road work, this is this road work. Jim, if you've got any bids or any information from playground stuff, to put it in a file, label it as 2021, label what the item is so that each of us, if we need to, we can access that information and uh, pull it up. Now, things that Sue already has stored in the computer, I don't need a copy of it, but other information that, let's say, God forbid, you know, you were incapacitated, I can go to that file, say, this is where, where Peter was at, this is how we need to move forward. So if I could ask you guys to take some time out to do that. Okay. Absolutely. So the good news is I think everything that I have is digital. Okay. Um, any, any physical copies I have, Sue, in her wisdom, did not ever give me originals. Okay. So, uh, never get anybody <laughs> this is why we like you, Sue. Um, otherwise, it would be buried in a box somewhere in my office. Yeah. But um, I think just about everything that is in the office is what needs to be in the office. And anything that's in those drawers, we just need to find homes for it. Because I'll be honest, I didn't understand the filing paradigm that the other no. Peter had either. No. But um, I mean, if it worked for him, I suppose. But we should just get things to their respective homes. If there's invoices for like, I don't know, 2019, let's get it in their respective area. If there's uh, accounts receivable, let's get it with accounts receivable. If there's stuff about Act 537, let's get it with Act 537, so on and there's so forth. Hodgepodge of stuff. Most of this stuff was not original. So I could honestly say most of it was like not an original. Yeah. If, if it's not original, let's just yeah. shred it. Okay, so I'll leave that for your discretion, but now there's room in the desk, and I'd like to keep track of things. With all the road work, Dan and I are going to be, you know, following each road individually, plus along with the accounts, so that we know exactly what's going on with everything. And so, you know, I want to get it to a format so that any of us can step into anyone else's shoes. We've all become a little bit specialized over the past year, and so... Um, you know, that has me a little bit concerned. I think, you know, what's the old expression? Does the right hand know what the left hand is doing? And I want to make sure that that is exactly what's going on. So, and Dan has been absolutely wonderful. I, I, you know, I wish he could be at the meeting. He's been absolutely wonderful with helping me keep track of uh, data and any kind of a job task that we ask of him, he's been doing so. Yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful for Dan's involvement. He's been a, a huge benefit to a lot of the things that we've been trying to get done, having yeah. the, the extra set of hands and somebody with their, their head on a, a swivel and a good mind has yep. been very, very helpful. Yep. So I'm all about transparency and informing the public over uh, issues. Oh, one more thing. Um, I apologize. Oh, no, no need to say sorry. Like, there's always like a lot of the, the monetary things. Mm -hmm. So everyone knows, hopefully we're going to be getting funds from the American Rescue Plan. And that's the idea that we have that we want to renovate the current garage over to a new office. Um, if we want to make any additional renovations on anything external, I know we want to move the trucks over to the current salt bay, et cetera, et cetera. Something that we can look at that the bank again mentions, we could always do a project that's financed um, because we do have a very small budget, uh, but that's something that we could push off to the, the 
um, another uh, time. Once we get the ball rolling, then I hate to say, you know, one thing happens and then we can see what our other needs are. So part of that American Rescue Plan, we can donate funds to uh, non-for-profit organizations. Uh, something that I'd like you guys to consider. Currently, we have, I think, $20,000 that's um, uh, uh, set aside for the Marion Township Community Association. I would propose you guys to consider taking $10,000 out of that American Rescue Plan for this year's budget, giving that to the Community Association, an additional $10,000 for the amount we will receive next year, plus the $10,000 that we normally give to them for next year 2022's budget, which would give them a total of $50,000. So I can't remember offhand, Peter, does that DCNR grant, is that a 50-50 match? It's, it's actually, it's a, you get the first, there's 20,000 that if you receive the grant, you get that right up front, and then they do a 50-50 match on the remainder. So I, if I recall correctly, if we gave the community association 50,000, they bring 10,000 in, let's call it 60,000. They would get basically another 50,000 from DCNR. Right. And what I was saying to you, to you and Jim the one day is there are playground companies that will do a match for funding. Yep. So if you basically go to that with $110,000, you could potentially get $200,000 or $210,000 of, of actual equipment or, or installation. Yeah, so, so I think that would be, that would make that park amazing. And I know Jim, you've got um, uh, the plans, that big plan is in the office. Uh, I know you've been trying to accumulate some information. Um, I think if we could target 2022 and have that amount of funding available to uh, the community association, I think that would really, really, you know, do a world of wonder for that park because you know, we want, we want everything to be great. We want everything to be on par. And so, um, you know, that's something I want you guys to consider as far as uh, contributing funds and we could help them move along with that grant. I think, I think this year it, it expired. I want to say it was like mid April, but if we could target that 2022 DCNR grant, help them out, get help, get them the information, work with them. And I, I can't even imagine what a hundred thousand dollars would do for that park. You know, if we could get mm -hmm. twice as much, that would just be un unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I love it. I love the idea. Um, okay. Don and Kelly, since you're on, um, I've turned on the ability to unmute yourselves if you'd like to say anything, but uh, I think we should collectively as a board and as the community association goes, uh, start working on, I know you unfortunately can't have the car show this year and some of the other like social gathering events, but uh, work on fundraising ideas, especially around things with the park, like dedicating a bench or getting a, a brick with somebody's name on it or a little plaque uh, for people that are, or, or companies in the area that have donated. Uh, the more funds that we can bring to the table for that that match on the DCNR, the the more we get. Because, like I said, I think you get the first twenty thousand as a given, and then they do a fifty fifty match on top of that. Um, so, if we can get fifty thousand from the township and ten or even twenty thousand, ideally, optimistically, more from the community, um, businesses, residents, that that's going to go exponentially further for doing things like putting in a walking path or the playground equipment or uh, renovations to the tennis court or the multi-purpose court. Um, really anything and everything that we want to do to that space is going to be made easier by having more funds. So um, I think we can use the the plan that McCarthy Engineering gave and like the, the grant request that we had generated, the, the one that I made and then you added to. I think we have a lot of the building blocks in place. We just really need to refine them and get things like the letters of commitment for, for funding. The, the township can very easily generate one saying that for 2022, we're, we're going to budget $50,000 for this project if the grant is awarded. Um, we can get letters of commitment from like, I'd, I'd personally be willing to donate. I'd imagine other people within the community would be personally willing to, to donate. We can reach out to businesses and see if they're willing to donate. Like I said, get a, a plaque that, that like this park was made possible by contributions from whatever business and these people uh, or like I said, you spend a thousand dollars and you can get a, you can buy a bench and a, put a dedication on it. Um, that sort of thing that if we get that figured out, we could very, very easily, I think, do this. 
because we, we know it's a, it's an attractive thing from a, a DCNR standpoint because they, they have used our playground um, in presentations of what playgrounds shouldn't be. Uh, any other items for comment, Irene? No, sorry, it took a little bit of <laughs> time. Like I said, there's there's always a lot of stuff in, in the financial report. So, and it's information that you know I, I want to share with everyone. So, yeah, no, I think it's a, a a great idea. I think we should put that right after public comment at the beginning of the meeting. No, do it like yeah. <laughs> sure. no pressure, no pressure, Irene. But yeah, no, I, I think okay. it's it's I think it's best served up front rather than right at the, right at the end. I agree. I agree. And this way, if people want to ask questions, they can. And this is something that if uh, if we have Dan at meetings, you could delegate that to Dan. Dan could give the financial report. <laughs> Poor Dan's not here to defend himself either. Um, <laughs> Jim, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I'm I'm with Irene now on the playground. I know you're on board with that. Uh, it'd be really nice to make our playground safe. Uh, accessible to those who have some handicap issues and to put a walking track in so everybody, everybody could enjoy that. So we're going to continue to work on that. Okay. Phenomenal. Sue, do you have any comments? Um, not really. Just Jim and I attended Judy Schwank's, uh, Senator Judy Schwank's little, whatever that was, Zoom meeting about the American Rescue Plan. Um, Personally, I thought it was a waste of time, a waste of 45 <laughs> minutes. Um, I mean, I learned more from PSATS than I did from her. She just, she just, she had two other people on. I, I didn't sign in. Um, it, the meeting was started already when I signed in. So I didn't know, I don't know who, what their positions were, but um, yeah, it was just a redundant from PSAT. So. Nothing new. Okay. Everybody's still waiting for regulations from Treasury. So, okay, we'll have to to watch that closely. But I think one way or the other, we will find a use for whatever we receive, whether it's renovations to the building, donations to the, the community association for the park. It'll it'll be put to good use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, anything yeah. we could relate to COVID. Um, and certainly improving the playgrounds, donations to non-for-profits. Uh, and it's on the PSATs, especially if a non-for-profit was hit by COVID. And, and they did lose funding, and we know that and we understand that. But there's also ways that we could certainly help them um, continue with their, their funding. And once the web page is up, we could certainly create a page for them. And there could be a donate button. And I think that would be ideal for them um, because so many people donate online it's unreal i mean gofundme is this like crazy insane thing so if if we have that available to them and again having had worked with a non-for-profit before i'll i'll try to do my best to help jim and and get concepts and ideas over to the association over what they could continue to do for fundraising opportunities you know especially when it's something as visible as the park um you know people are pleased when they see a change so, and that's what we're all trying to do here. There's so many things that go on behind, behind the scenes and a lot of the stuff that I've been doing financially, no one has any idea or concept about. And that's why I want to share and let people know what we have and have been doing. So. Yeah, agreed. I, I hope to, to have everybody look back at any of our tenures here on the board as open, honest, and transparent. So that's, uh, that's something that speaks to me on a personal level. Thanks for the thumbs up, Kelly. Um, well, if we don't have any other items uh, for discussion, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 10, 18 a.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Meeting Thank adjourned. you, everyone. Meeting adjourned. Have a lovely Thank rest you. of the weekend. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.